So, hello. Uh, this talk will be about uh, the new EPUB export filter in LibreOffice Writer. Uh, just shortly about myself, um, I have been involved with this co code base for a number of years now, and um, my, my pet area is Writer, so I was uh, happy to hear that uh, there is an opportunity to uh, implement a new export filter in the form of the EPUB export uh, in Writer. And um, I keep mentioning that in LibreOffice, but that's a Writer export filter. So, so far, this is only limited uh, to Writer. Uh, so, why do we need one more export filter, um, making the LibreOffice code base even more bloated? Um, the motivation is that um, if you have some mobile phone or tablet or e-reader or, or something like that with a small screen, then <coughs> for you, your use case, EPUB is kind of the new PDF. Uh, PDF is not going away. It's still a very nice format when you have some larger screen, but uh, it's not very good at reflowable text handling. So instead, what we have is EPUB, um, which is designed exactly for this use case. Um, so, as you probably know, uh, LibreOffice has pretty good PDF export um, feature. Um, so, wouldn't it be nice if uh, it would support to um, support exporting to EPUB as well directly as a as a native feature? Uh, previously, you could export to some other format, and then use some second tool to convert from that format uh, to EPUB. Uh, the problem is that all of these are losing conversion. So the more items you have in your pipeline, and, the, and perhaps the end result is not even uh, something you can recognize. So it's good to limit uh, the number of building blocks you use. Uh, so directly exporting from LibreOffice itself is, is, uh, has, has its own benefits. Um, Regarding the state of this work, um, the recently released LibreOffice 6.0 has basic support, and um, the 6.1 will have uh, much improved support. Uh, the good thing is that um, ebooks are, are kind of books, and I'm, I was told that uh, a good book has, does not have much formatting, so the formatting does not distract from the actual content which means that uh, basic support should work for good books already. And if you need some more improved support, then maybe you should refine your book. Uh, in any case, for the rest of this talk, I will talk about features which are not just basic text support with just um, uh, a minimal set of character formattings like bold and italics, and the minimal set of uh, paragraph formattings like uh, uh, adjusting uh, it to be centered or some, some paragraph spacing and, and something uh, easy like this, but more complicated features. So from now on, all of these are, um, will be uh, shipped in uh, 6.1. Uh, one is um, one frequently used feature in, in ebooks is hyperlinks. Uh, so um, the, th this was the first non-basic uh, basic text uh, feature I was focusing on, but to be able to fully handle the hyperlinks, you need to um, have support for all these uh, paragraph and character styles and all the inheritance of that and so on. But at the end, we have some um, hyperlink support and hopefully at the end, it will end up in your EPUB result um, the way you saw it in Writer. Uh, then comes uh, table support where you can have a set of properties on the table itself, uh, at least in, from the writer perspective, uh, then it would be just rows and inside the rows you have the cells. And so you have the table properties, row properties and cell properties, but from a high level um, point of view, you also have a column properties. And then you can have uh, the row spans, the column spans and um, various properties on this. Um, with, with the current master uh, LibreOffice, um, these examples are, are working nicely. These are screenshots from EPUB readers. Um, and it's not hard to construct something similar in a writer. Um, the other um, new feature is um, uh, much better image support. 6.0 has support for simple inline images, um, which I mostly added because I wanted to test 
uh, the part of the exporter that um, assembles the package, the, the EPUB package. And for that, I wanted to have a use case for, for the binary content. So I added the minimal image support um, where the inline images um, or ASK character encoded images are a good fit because they don't have um, uh, special positioning, which can be complex. Uh, but now in, in 6.1, uh, you can have um, much better support for this. So the various uh, image borders, um, image wrap types, and image act anchor types, that's all supported, or at least a considerable amount of combination of this. Um, and again, from a user's point of view, a caption on an image is just, just one more property of the image. And this is something that um, e-books e uh, use a lot. Um, technically, that's a text frame, and the text frame contains an image and with some additional text, and that text contains text fields. So all of these building blocks are implemented too. At the end, you will just see a working uh, caption support for images. Um, then the next one is font embedding, um, which is uh, pretty uh, frequently used for, for ebooks. Uh, the nice thing is that at the for the font binary format, uh, what we have in ODF can be transferred to EPUB as is. So no, uh, no manipulation of the font data itself is necessary. Um, and here is some very tiny uh, screenshot of some special font that, uh, that was not available on, my, uh, available on my system. And that's, um, again, a screenshot from some uh, EPUB reader. Um, then we come to... Um, features where um, the writer document itself does not really have a concept for, but the EPUB specification has. The first example is cover images. Um, in a writer, you don't really set a cover image on a document. If we generate thumbnails down, um, we just um, paint the, the first page of the document to a meta file and we work with that. Um, so, um, as part of the uh, export options, you can specify a cover image. Um, the export options is a dialog that used to be very simple, and as, as um, I added more and more features now, it's uh, relatively complex. Um, but you s can set there is the version of the EPUB. Um, EPUB 3 and EPUB 2 are two major versions uh, which are interesting. Um, EPUB 3 is what we default to. Then you can define how do you want to split your document into, into EPUB sections. Um, we default to just uh, splitting by heading one styles, but if you have some plain text import that a document, then perhaps uh, splitting on page breaks, ex explicit page breaks is a, is a better setting. Um, also, there is support for the reflowable um, layout, which is the default, and there is also an EPUB fixed layout, which is a, a bit odd, like if we want fixed layout, then why don't you use PDF, but I will come back to that later. And uh, you have an explicit user interface to uh, specify a custom cover image um, and various metadata. Um, for the custom metadata as part of the EPUB export is interesting because uh, you may want to um, export to EPUB some, some, um, some classic book where you are not the, the author of the book. But uh, if you look at that writer document, then for that document, you are the author. So it makes sense to be able to specify a custom author, uh, author just um, as part of the EPUB export. Um, then one more new feature is a support for footnotes and image pop-ups. Um, for both of these, the, the point is that you click on an image or, or some text and some, some pop-up appears that displays some additional com content and your original position is not lost, so you can close this and get back to, your, um, get back to continue reading the document. Um, one form is that, which is perhaps uh, more regular for uh, the regular um, writer user is the footnotes, but this also works that you have some low resolution image inside uh, the document, and if you click on that or tap on, on your device, then some high resolution pop-up as a full screen um, object appears. So this fixed layout is basically 
um, as, to you as a user, it's quite the same as PDF, just built on top of X, uh, XHTML and SVG. Um, probably um, the primary use case is when um, you are working with a publisher that uh, only accepts EPUB, and you have some format like a comic book where, where the fixed layout is, is uh, important because um, some reflowable um, text would uh, modify the meaning of, of uh, your content, uh, then fixed layout is uh, still wanted and uh, the publisher refuses to work with you if you provide a PDF then this is a, uh, something you can work with. Um, and the nice thing is that at the end it was not uh, too complex to add support for this. So even if you don't need it, it's not a complexity that adds a much overhead uh, to the code. Uh, so so far, this is what you what you get as a as a user, and uh, for for the remaining time, I will talk about uh, I will talk about it about how this is um, developed. So the basic architecture um, is like this: we have the uh, we have the writer document model, and then the EPUB exporter works with that um, document and uh, document model and writes out an EPUB file. Inside the EPUB export, I tried to uh, tried hard to um, reinvent anything. So I tried to reuse um, what building blocks we already have. Um, the most interesting part is the uh, EPUB generator library, which is part of the document liberation project, and it was not part of LibreOffice, but now uh, it's bundled with that, and um, it it was a good starting point. I had to extend it uh, variously, but uh, at least as an initial step, it was already working. Um, we start with invoking the ODT export and we com consume the ODF um, um, XML markup. Um, this is nice because the EPUB gen is working with the LibriVenge API and that's closely tied to the ODF format. So this means that um, we don't have to do much uh, transferring manually. There is no explicit code to transfer the italic or boldness of characters. This is just working out of the box. We just transfer the character properties and so on. Uh, so we have the ODF export. I explained lib epub jam. Um, the LibriVanch text export, that's, that was the main part of the work, uh, to be able to use LibriVanch based export filters inside LibreOffice. Uh, but because of the EPUB generator was the was the first one, this this building block was necessary. For the next uh, LibriVanch based export filter, it will be much easier. And at the very end, um, LibriVanch gen just generates the various streams in this uh, EPUB package, but it has no uh, own support for for compressing um, zip files and so on. And that's great because we don't really want to have zillions of um, different zip. Um, uh, compression code. So we get the callbacks and then the LibreOffice own code um, uh, does the usual uh, packaging just as it happens for OXML or ODF. Uh, so this is a long list of uh, features that I had to add to EPUB, EPUB gen. And um, this means that by the time of the 6.0 release, also a lib EPUB gen release was made. Um, this, which is basically the fallout of all the, all the mentioned, mentioned features. Then um, one concept I would like to explain is the media directory. The media directory is the directory that sits, uh, sits next to the document and it contains files which are not part of the writer document model. Um, this means that um, it can contain an XMP file, this, uh, this uh, metadata uh, specification from Adobe, um, to automatically override the metadata during export, which is, which is something you can specify manually on the user interface, but this way you can convert thousands of documents automatically with some custom metadata override. Then I already mentioned this um, image pop-up use case where you have some uh, multi-megapixel photo and not, not only a small number of them, but something large. Then it's, um, it, there are benefits of keeping that outside of the document model in Writer. Um, also, the cover images are sitting here. Uh, by default, this is nothing compl uh, complex. If you have some foobar.odt, then a directory in that uh, in next to the file called foobar is, uh, some, is the default media directory and again you can customize this. 
Uh, for the fixed layout, um, initially I was a bit scared. It sounded um, we will have to reinvent lot, lots of um, um, features that the PDF export already has, and and why do this duplication when there is little benefit to the end user and so on. Uh, but eventually, um, we already have the, the support for exporting writer pages to meta files. We have an, already have an SVG export which can take a meta file, uh, which means that the fixed layout EPUB export result is really just a series of these SVG images, and um, that con that builds the the fixed layout EPUB document. Um, one one problem with this was that the the resulting document does not know much about characters and paragraphs anymore. So how to provide some pretty um, uh, navigation document or index for, for the file? And for this, um, I separated um, the responsible code for for this from the PDF export, which um, has a similar problem. And know that building block can work without an actual PDF export, but it can also work with an EPUB export. And with that, for each page, we know which chapters are, are starting there. Um, I did not skip testing in real life, but here I will skip testing. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to um, um, say that um, for everything we do at Collabora, somebody has to pay for that because it's work. And um, uh, in this case, um, uh, Core is sitting there, uh, known and of his, his small company, and uh, he, and in collaboration with the partner, was uh, sponsor sponsoring this work. So thanks a lot for them. And otherwise, thanks for listening. <laughs> Any questions? Great. I use my time, so thanks again for listening. <laughs>